So we left the car with no working ECU. We'd fitted a coil pack, didn't work. Car didn't run, pushed outside, forgotten. What we've done, we went onto eBay and had a mooch around. Um, people were selling second-hand ECUs, but with just the ECU, it's gotta be cosy to the car. Now, some of the smarter people out there who are braking cars um, are doing little packages. So we have got a replacement ECU, but also in the pack, we were sent um, ignition key and barrel and the little receiver for the transponder that's always in the key. I'll get, get you to see that. There you go, it's that little transponder there. That's, that's why you have the security keys and the signal is picked up by this little device. So they sent us the three parts from the car that they broke. So what we're hoping is gonna happen, we can fit those three bits to the car and it'll recognize it as a package and the car will start. So um, we're gonna give it a try. Keep everything crossed, this is gonna work. Otherwise, don't know what the next stage is. Let's see how we get on. So I think our first job is to try and fit the, this is the old key, there's the ignition barrel, and that little uh, receiver for the transponder is gonna be somewhere around here. Don't know yet, we're gonna have a look. So we've gotta take off this plastic cover and see how we go. There it is. So this is the little receiver thing. And we've got to replace that one with this one. Okay. There's only a screw holding this in by the looks of it. Um, that's just a little cable tie. And then we've got to get the barrel out. I think we're gonna to have to fit the barrel just to see if that's an active part of this or it's, well, we'll find out. Now this will be useful if you ever have to remove the ignition barrel. You need the key. So if you haven't got the key, that could be a problem, but you need the key. You put the key to, to position two. Then what you need to do is on the top, just there, just there is a pin and you need to push the pin down and we got and out it comes and the re that's what you're pushing down the pin. You see that? Yeah. There you go that little pin that's what you're pushing down. And to put the new one in is the reverse. We simply put put the key to position two, pin at the top there into that little groove, and just push it in. Job done. Right, the new transponder simply goes like that. And screw for it. Plug it in. I'm going to just get a cable tie and cable tear that back in position. And then we are almost ready to go. Just need to put the ECU on. So it's day three on the car, and as you probably guessed, it's still not working. We put the new ECU in, we put the new ignition barrel in, we put the new receiver for the uh, security, the immobilizer in. No God, it still doesn't work, still no fire. So I'm now convinced that the fault codes that we got, which was the ignition circuit, uh, the coil pack, was a red herring. Uh, we'd already cleared those once when the car got wet and it started to misfire. So we cleared those. And so there's nothing to say that when the car was running again, it didn't throw up the same fault code. So when the car broke down and refused to run, we read the faults codes saw that there was this ignition circuit fault immediately jumped to the conclusion that the coil pack had terminally failed 
um, which may or may not have been true, but it needed to be replaced anyway. Then we went on to the forums and saw that everybody was saying that uh, ignition coil packs failing have a habit of spiking the ECU. So we went down that route and we put the ECU and the associated security stuff on. I think they were red herring. I think they were probably already there before the car broke down. I think the car can spark. I think the car knows it can spark. The ECU is working. What I think it can't do is it doesn't know when to spark, which is a crank position sensor, which is another common fault on these. They do go quite regularly. They're regularly replaced. So that's what we're going to do today. We've bought a crank position sensor. It's cheap. Uh, so yeah, sorry, Bangonomics. It's still spending money when we shouldn't be, but it's a few quid. We're going to fit that and see if our theory comes true. Um, and I'll show you where this, this is buried. Um, we've already taken the throttle body out of the way, it's right on the, it's buried under the manifold, so if I show you here, it's actually right down here, so it's very difficult to get at when everything's in place, that's the plug there, if the camera will focus for us, there you go. So that's where we've got to get at. It just looks like a little tiny 8mm bolt and we'll pop this new sensor in and then hopefully this will work. So the simple job of getting the crankshaft sensor out was not so simple. What should look like this uh, now looks like that's the one that's just come out. Uh, little tab broke off straight away and then we had to go really really gentle and I say we, it took three of us uh, in shifts to get this out in one, in well, two pieces. Uh, what we were really scared of was we were just going to snap this bit off and this was going to get stuck in. You've got no chance. It's so buried in that engine bay, there's no chance you get a drill or anything in there. So you've got to just little movements, moving it with mole grips and pliers and God knows what. So there you go. One crankshaft position sensor removed. Now we've got the fun of getting the new one in and seeing if it's actually what's causing the starting problem. Crank position sensor, one bolt, one plug, two minutes work, is it? Yeah. What we've ended up having to do, we took three of us to get it out, which I showed you, and then trying to get it back in, you can't actually get it at the right angle. The reason we could get the old one out was the securing tag had snapped off and it gave us enough room to um, wiggle it out. So what we've had to do is this, this is just ridiculous, I'm going to show you this now. So. There you go, we've removed the whole inlet manifold. So it's all right, it's only four bolts and a plug, so it does come out quite easily. And then right down here, the reason we couldn't get in, I'm just trying to find the right bit. Right, there's, that's where, that hole there is where the uh, crank position sensor goes. Try and get this to focus for you, there you go. So this is the oil pressure sender, that's just directly in the way, you can't get at it, so when the manifold's in the way you can't see it, um, so you don't know what you're doing, anyway what we're going to do is we'll take this out and then we can just put the sender in, make sure the wiring's done, put that back together again and it'll better work. Right, well, I wanted to explain what we were doing. We trace the live feed for the coil back to this point here, which normally in the car you can't see because this is the fuse box here. This is the bit of the fuse. Zoom back a bit. That's the bit of the fuse box you can usually see poking through that hole there under the dashboard. And then behind it, it's got a whole load more of uh, relays and there's a few more fuses. So it come off that number 10 fuse and a 10 amp fuse and the wire we, we put a continuity test on from this point through to the live feed on the um, on the coil pack and there was nothing there was a very weak signal so the wire had obviously started to break down so what we've done we've just spliced in a wire here so this new wire goes out up and under the dashboard and um, He's going to join the coal pack so that's what we've done we've put a new new live feed in effectively that's what we've done and then at the other end there's a plug that normally goes in there so what we're going to do is that's the purple and blue 
it's blue the purple trace or vice versa that's we're gonna splice it in somewhere down here just make sure that's okay right we're now starting to go crazy this let me just show you this um, that is just a little simple LED now people call these noid lights and things like this um, what it is it's just a low voltage thing so we know the central connector is live so we push that one in there and make the connection and then we put it into one side so they're both negatives one for each coil pack push that in there and then what we do we crank And we see the one feed to the one coil is working because that's flashing. Then we take the black wire out and put it into the other side. If you can see that there, just push it in. There you go. Now we test. And the flashing tells us that the, the signal from the ECU to both sides of the coil pack is good. So we've got a signal. Um, head scratchy time. Right, these are the these are the spark plugs from cylinders two and three, and as you can see, they're perfectly normal. Nothing wrong with those. This, on the other hand, is from cylinder number one, and as you can see, that's a real state. So we've got a problem on one and four, which Again, by my calculations on the coil pack, that's the top coil pack. We know we've got live feed to it now. We know it's going to earth via the ECU, so we know that's working. So really, all that leaves us with is this piece of the coil pack. Here's the coil pack. It's this top, these top two here. Those two. There's our dirty plugs. Or it could be the leads, which just seems a bit weird that they would break down just like that. All the plugs themselves. Now, I hope you're going to be able to hear this. I've just spent uh, a lot of time trying to get the car to run right. We finally got a spark back into it. We discovered that there was no live feed to the ignition coil. Um, and when I did get a feed to the coil, we started to get some life. The old coil pack was dead. We put the new one back on. Um, started up and it was running on two cylinders so saying really really rough we have a very unhappy car but it's running and I kept starting kept checking 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 did the feeds and um, just because I was concerned because I'm jump starting off the Volvo and I'd left the Volvo un I'd left the Volvo switched off so it was just running off the Volvo's battery I was concerned the battery in the Volvo might go dead so I thought I'd put a bit of charge into the Volvo's battery so I started the Volvo up got a bit of charge through the system and then did this she runs it was lack of voltage the the battery had started to go flat it's probably only supplying I don't know 11 volts maybe less there wasn't enough power to power the injection system and the ignition system everything else it wouldn't run it runs sweet as a nut so we've actually fixed it um, what we thought at the beginning was a, a failed coil pack and then suspected the, uh, sig the coil pack signal transmitters senders whatever they call them uh, in the ECU had failed so we tried a different ECU um, we've chased it around and around what we've learnt is if we'd have just done some basic fault finding when we started i.e. checked the live feed to the coil uh, we could have saved ourselves a lot of time and a lot of messing about as it is I'm really pleased the car is finished it's running really nicely uh, starting on the button um, no doubt this little car is going to throw up some more trouble for us because I've just got that kind of feeling but for the time being it's back on the road. 
if you've got any questions if you'd like to know what we did or how we did it if it's not in the video please leave us a question below uh, love to see your comments love to hear from you and don't forget please to subscribe to the channel loads more coming see you soon